the week, we have survived um, another day, another week in isolation, I should say. Um, last night was such a good time with uh, Jarvis Pang from Winning Appliances. We did a live Q and A, um, chatting all about we need to, you know, all, everything we need to know about kitchen appliances because there is so much out there at the moment. It can be quite overwhelming. So if you didn't um, get a chance to uh, join us on the live, if you scroll down on the uh, Design Collective Facebook group, we have the live video still there for you. But today you are here for the Kitchen Trends Workshop. I'm really excited to be sharing this with you because kitchen and bathroom design is something I'm really passionate about because I love the detail that goes into a well-designed kitchen. Lots of thought needs to go into it, and it's something that really shouldn't be rushed. Um, not only are we spending a lot of money when redesigning a kitchen, but we spend a lot of time in there too. And it's quite important to understand how we work in the space, what we're lacking in our current kitchen, because we don't really want to be um, duplicating those problems again in the new kitchen. So today is all about, you know, what is new in kitchen designs? They, you know, kitchens uh, definitely do evolve over the time. Um, and you can tell when a kitchen, you know, is really dated. Um, and I may step back a little bit and say my design philosophy is all about timeless design. I, I think it's very important to have an interior that's going to last a long time because you are spending a lot of money. You want to make sure it lasts and you're not constantly spending extra money fixing all those mistakes or all those things that you thought were, were trendy at the time but not so much anymore. So I want you to take these kitchen design trends as an assault and you take them as you will, just like how I do. We as an interior designers go to lots of um, design shows and fairs, um, visit lots of different talks to see the latest and greatest in um, lots of products that are out there. But we take on what we think is going to survive not only in the Australian market, but within our client circles as well. So what I've done is put together a great presentation on the kitchen trends I believe are going to last a long time and work well with lots of my clients and, you know, with my followers like you guys. You know, you've told me what you are after and what you are struggling with in your homes in terms of decoration and design. So I've made it really simple and pinpointed those aspects in the latest trends and deliver them to you. Now, if you want to ask a question, please comment below. I would love to hear from you. This is not a formal webinar. You know, I've got my wine handy. I hope you do too. So please interrupt me anytime where there is a specific question you have about something particular I'm talking about because I am here to help you guys and to share my knowledge about everything interior design because it doesn't have to be intimidating. Hiring an interior designer doesn't have to be intimidating too because uh, we work with all sorts of budgets and all types of clients. So let's get into it. I'm going to share my screen here and go through this presentation I've put together. So just a little bit about me. For those of you who have joined, thank you and welcome. Um, but if you don't know a lot about me, I'm an interior designer um, and specialise in residential and commercial interiors. I've been doing it for over 12 years now and love working with clients that know what they like, but they just don't know how to put it all together. So I help with their vision. Um, and, and I believe that an interior, you know, your own home should be an honest reflection of yourself, your personality and the family that live there as well because there is no point designing a home that looks like a display home or looks like something that you see from Instagram because we all don't live perfectly magazined photo shoot lives. You know, life happens. There is crap that goes everywhere. If I turn my screen around right now, you do not want to see the state of my house because it's got to be enjoyed and it's got to be loved. So I'm all about embracing life and making sure you have a home that, that fits within that too. So kitchen trends, where are we at? So some great um, pinpoints that I've put together for you. 
are going to be timeless. Now, something I've seen that's very popular at the moment, and we're going to see more of it in Australian interiors, is open shelving. Now, some people may um, roll their eyes at it because it means you have to keep your kitchen clean and what on God's earth you can actually put on those shelves, but embrace it. You know, it doesn't have to be just a beautifully curated shelf with lots of pretty homewares. Stack your plates on there, stack your glasses. It's all about opening up the kitchen and, and showing off what you have there. So maybe it's some beautiful china that you've got from, um, you know, your grandmother or, or passed down. Show that off. Maybe you don't want to use it all the time. But having it somewhere safe on a pretty shelf can actually look quite quite good. Um, open shelving is also great if you don't have a huge space. It can actually give the illusion of more space in, in the kitchen because you don't have these bulky overheads um, over your, your eyesight. So, um, you know, you can use them um, in contemporary and in traditional spaces. Um, you know, I love recycled timber. It can look great with some open shelving. Um, you know, that middle picture here, we've got um, some pressed metal and glass shelves too. So it can really work no matter if it's an industrial kitchen you want to design, something uber contemporary and sleek or something traditional that, and quite rustic as well. The next um, thing that I think is quite big at the moment is butler's pantries. Now, not everyone has the luxury of the space um, of having a butler's pantry, but the reason for it is if you want to have a beautiful, pristine kitchen, it means you can have all your prep space, all your um, food storage in the butler's pantry, and you can close that door and not even worry about the mess and it means you can keep your kitchen quite clean. It's also great to have, you know, your toaster, your kettle, your dishwasher. Some people also have a secondary sink as well, um, maybe for, for prepping veg and things like that. Um, and yeah, like I said, any sort of Tupperware um, and, and dry food, um, non-perishable items can also go in that Atlas pantry too. Now, in terms of choosing colours for the kitchen, I like to keep it simple. Whatever you do in your main kitchen, just continue it on into the butler's pantry because when that door's open to that pantry, you have this seamless look and ensuring that with that colour that's all the same just gives the illusion of a bigger space and, and shows that you're actually consistent with, uh, with the colour palette too because you don't want to make it busy. I think that can really um, distract the eye. Stone splashbacks. Now, I think the days are gone with glass splashbacks. Um, not only are they a nightmare to keep clean, but they, they do date a kitchen. So a stone splashback does give you that, um, that great advantage of having no grout lines like a, a splashback, a, a glass splashback does. It's easy to keep clean. And whatever bench top colour you've done, you can actually continue it up onto the splashback too. Just like lots of these um, images as well, they've continued whatever's on the bench top onto the splashback. So it creates a real minimal sleek look. Now you can use um, natural stone, you can use a composite stone, so something like quantum quartz or Caesar stone. But if you did listen to the live yesterday when we we're talking about um, an induction cooktop as well, you can use a stone splashback um, with an induction, but you can't use it if you've got a gas cook cooktop. The only time you can use a stone bench top around a gas cooktop is ensuring you have a minimum of 250 millimetres away from an open flame. Um, that's because quantum quartz, Caesar stone, all those composite stones have a resin in it and that's combustible. So you want to use a non-combustible surface. Something like natural stone or even a porcelain stone works really well. Um, so someone's asked, would you recommend a door into the butler's pantry? I think so because a butler's pantry is somewhere that you're going to be cooking and prepping um, and stacking up the dishes. So if you don't want to see that mess, 
you can easily slide that door closed and not have to worry about it. So if you do have unexpected guests, you just slide that door and don't even worry. Plus, I mean, I've got a walk-in pantry, not the luxury of a, of a butler's pantry, but and I find I have to close the door when I haven't been very neat in putting all my Tupperware away and, and making sure the cans are all lined up because it's life, you know. Sometimes you just chuck things in and you move on. So I think having a door does really help in that scenario. And it doesn't even have to be a solid door as well. It could actually be a frosted glass door or a fluted glass. And I'm going to talk more about fluted glass a little bit later as well. So next... So still talking about splashbacks, if you don't have the budget for a full stone splashback in your kitchen, I would recommend using um, tiles. They add such fun personality. It means you can play around with the layout as well. You know, some tiles don't always have to run vertical or horizontal. You can create some great patterns. So maybe um, a herringbone, you can do a brick bond pattern to create that subway look. Uh, or even like um, these two photos here in the middle and on the on the right, you can have that stack laid. So that means all the grout lines match up. Um, and don't be worried about grout. You know, it is quite easy to keep clean if you pick a colour other than white. <laughs> so, you know, um, a soft grey grout works with any tile, I guarantee it. Even if it's a white tile you want to use, a soft grey works really well. And just like that middle photo, having an accented uh, grout colour shows off the shape of the tile as well. There are so many different colours um, and patterns and also um, material as well. You can get ceramic, porcelain, natural stone like a marble or granite you know the options are endless and don't be too concerned about the cost in terms of um, a mosaic because lots of these tiles come in a, like a, a sheet 300 by 300 and sometimes they're sold per sheet rather than per square meter but don't let the price scare you if a sheet is say 15 dollars each because your splashback, it's actually not a big area. So when you price it up, it's not that bad. So the splashback is something you want to invest in because it's a statement piece and, um, and can be a really big wow factor um, into a home. Someone's ask, what if the island bench is longer than three metres? There is a join on the surface. Yes, that is definitely true. When you are looking at um, using a stone splashback so I'm just going to go back to here remember just like glass or a mirror these stone slabs come in a certain size and generally anything bigger than three meters is going to have a join so don't let that scare you but just um be a bit mindful where you're going to put that join I wouldn't put it smack bam in the center because you're going to see it sometimes to to this um off to the side works quite well and if you have a great stonemason they can get it um, quite close so you actually don't even see it but if you are using a natural stone like a marble where you've got these beautiful big veins you can actually ask the stonemason to book match so what that means is do you remember when you were in primary school and you have the piece of paper and you paint it on one side and when you folded it you got that same pattern on either side. That's what book matching does. So you can actually use that stone um, line as an advantage and create this beautiful sort of book match um, pattern in the middle of the splashback. All righty, the next slide. So we're talking about tiles. All righty, appliance cupboards. I'm designing lots of kitchen these days with an appliance cupboard in mind. And sometimes it's not because I'm the one that's actually suggesting it. My clients are seeing it and are seeing the advantages of it. Kitchens, if you don't have a big area to have, you know, really large workspaces, your toaster, your kettle, 
your thermomix can take up quite a lot of bench space. And that's prime real estate when you want to um, prepare dinner and lunch because you want as much surface space as possible to, to do that or also to entertain on your island bench. So an appliance cupboard is a great way, just like a butler's pantry, lower the door and you not see a thing. So if an appliance, sorry, if a butler's pantry or a walk-in pantry is something that you can't afford because of space or budget, I would consider an appliance cupboard in, in your kitchen design. Um, you know, it can be the, the full height where you close the doors, just like that image on the left-hand side where they've used the entire um, length of the space to have some open shelving, a bench top to keep, even your coffee machine as well. And in the drawers, you know, maybe that's where you can have a kitchen, uh, sorry, a, um, a coffee and a tea making facility. So have all your teaspoons there, have your sugar, all your um, mugs, because when you make a cup of coffee or tea, all you're going to do is turn on that switch and, and not race around the kitchen getting organised. It's a really great organised space. And some of those appliances can be quite messy. So simply close the doors and it's done. This uh, middle photo here is actually one of my projects that I've designed for a client that loved the idea of having her Thermomix hidden. She loves cooking with her Thermomix and has all the beautiful spices um, and herbs in, and she wanted to have it in one space. So we designed it so you open up and the doors actually fold open and then close. So by having these folded doors means you're creating more space when you walk in between and you have multiple people in the kitchen at once. And the image on the um, right shows a corner appliance cupboard. So even if you don't have a lot of room in, you know, doing such a, a big um, appliance cupboard, if you have maybe a, a U shape or um, a corner in your kitchen that is a bit odd, I'm going to say, where you need um you know, uh, it's pretty much a dead space. Having your microwave, your toaster and kettle in that corner behind a door is brilliant. You can even add a, um, a gas lift door as well um, if you don't want to have this Constantina um, solution. All righty, drawers. I am finding, and, you know, lots of interior designers and cabinet makers and kitchen designers are designing kitchens these days with drawers everywhere. If you think back maybe to your current kitchen or to an older kitchen you had, having cupboard doors, it's so hard to, when you open it up, trying to get to the back to get that pot or to get that Tupperware container, you lose it. Even in a pantry as well, it's so hard to get to the back. So having a drawer, you simply open up the drawer, you can see right now exactly what's in that drawer even right at the back and it's easily accessible um even you can even have a drawer underneath a kitchen sink too it just means it's going to be a u shape and they just cut out a space in the middle for all the plumbing to go the only area you can you know, I, I would recommend having cupboards is for the overheads and maybe if you have any tricky corner cupboards as well um you know, because that's where you can put maybe something like a Lazy Susan to, to access deep into those cupboards. But just like that image on the left-hand side, if you've got a pantry, sometimes shelves are really hard to get to and you have to go to Ikea and get all those nifty sort of um, pan stacking shelves because you can't actually see the full depth of, of what's inside the pantry unless you have it stacked. So drawers is another way in the pantry to open it up and see fully um, what you've got uh, stored away. Something else that's really big at the moment is curves in a kitchen. Not only in a kitchen, I should say, but in the in interiors of homes. You're probably starting to see arched mirrors, arched doorways, round bathroom mirrors, that curve is huge at the moment. And it's because it creates a softness to the space. It's an organic shape and it just feels beautiful. I love it on an island bench, especially if you have an overhang area, just like that, um, that second photo 
right here. You can add some stools around there and add more than just two people to the space. It can actually actually create like a conversational space, especially if you're cooking and you've got some guests over or maybe you've got the kids doing some homework. You can be, you know, all together and you're utilising um, that space too. Not only do you see curves on an island bench, but, you know, you can see in a bulkhead here, these cabinets here are rounded on the edges. I just love it. It's perfect when you're coming around a corner and it's quite tight. Rather than having a square edge, maybe soften it with the rounded profile because it's a great way to enter a space is having that lovely soft curve um, and it saves space too. All righty, how's your wine going? Is it, I need to be topped up. Mine's just about there. And the last thing I wanted to touch on is textures. I'm all for mixing textures within a space. I might just go, before I start on this, I might just um, answer someone's question here. Do you like butch, book matching stone or prefer vein matching? I feel quite uncomfortable with the kind of triangle book match you get with marbles. Yeah, it's quite prominent when you get a book match um, because you see, especially if that joins in the middle, you're going to see that book match um, head on. And sometimes that can be quite powerful. So if you vein match, what that means is the stonemason can match whatever. Say you've got a, a vein, you know, running on an angle on one slab. The next slab, you can actually continue that vein. And that adds a, a lot of a much softer vein to the space. So I love vein matching in bathrooms um, as well because when you've got large wall tiles, you can vein match and it actually creates a, a bigger space. Um, so, yeah, uh, great tip on that. I, I think vein matching is better than, well, I'm not going to say better. I'm going to say it looks softer than, than book matching, that's for sure. So textures. I'm all about mixing textures and people love to match. Everything has to be matchy, matchy, matchy. I just, it reminds me of, remember when Fantastic Furniture was selling the whole complete set of the bed the bedside tables matched with the tall boy and then, you know, you go into the ki the um, living area and you get the PV cabinets and matches as well. The timbers don't have to match these days. It doesn't have to be a complete set. I love when the, you know, timber floor and the timber cabinets in a kitchen contrast. It looks beautiful. It adds interest and adding different um timber tones just adds lots of warmth. So don't be afraid to mix those timbers. Um, I am loving walnut timber at the moment. For many years now, you know, Scandinavian interiors has been all about that light oak, that really washed out timber, which is beautiful. But now we're wanting something a bit more cosy. We're wanting something that feels really warm. And walnut really does that. You, you add such depth to a space when you use a deeper timber and don't be afraid that a deeper timber is going to make the room feel smaller because um, gone are the days as of having really bright white kitchens have you noticed that it's not around anymore everyone loves to feel cozy and safe and warm and especially at the times we're in at the moment um, we want to feel we're, we're safe so having warmth in in our bathrooms and living rooms and kitchens is um, is quite important. This um, photo here of this green, I am loving green at the moment. I, I have for the past year and I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. I've seen it in paint colours, I've seen it in cabinet colours and it's stunning. You know, it, even if you look at fashion as well, that khaki, that beautiful olive um, tone is, is definitely here to stay and if you're a little bit scared on having that green everywhere it doesn't have to be just like this photo I have a two-toned kitchen incorporate a more neutral color into the cabinets so that green really does stand out but also what the whites or that neutral color does is uh, is tone it down so um, your eye actually rests that's what it's all about is finding the balance with all these textures and colours um, 
especially when you're researching at the moment, you're going through Pinterest and you're pinning all these amazing photos and you love it. You want to create some rest within your spaces and you don't want to chuck all these Pinterest ideas and Instagram ideas into one space because not only can it look busy, but it can look like a hot mess. So try and find that key element that you love and tone it down with something simple like a white or a grey or a nude colour or even timber as well because timber is natural and that does tone down lots of those bright and crazy colours. So fluted glass, that's something I was talking about earlier with um, butler's pantry, butler's pantries having a door. Fluted glass is great because it's like translucent. You can't see all the way through it. It's been around for years. I think like in the 1920s or something, it was huge. And I love it in bathrooms. Um, maybe you don't want to see through into the shower and you want to create an effect with the shower screen. Having a fluted glass really does add a beautiful dimension to the space. So you can introduce fluted glass into the kitchen by having um, glass overhead cabinets in fluted glass or even sliding doors as well, just like that sliding pantry door too. And tapware. tapware Coloured tapware is ever at the moment and thanks to the bloody block, everyone is loving brass and rose gold and gold and that's great. I love it. Cool. But it's not timeless. If you love it, that is perfect. It's all about what you love and if you think that you've just got to have it, please just go for it. But don't pick coloured tapware because everyone else is doing it and because it's what you see on the block because that's not what your style is all about. You know, you've got to find something. If you feel uncomfortable about, tap, about coloured tapware, maybe black's too harsh, there is nothing wrong with chrome tapware. Chrome is timeless and it's going to stay around for a very long time. But if you do want to be a little bit adventurous but still be safe, Brushed nickel or like a stainless steel tapware is just as timeless as chrome, but it still adds a beautiful statement and adds that textural element to the space. So, um, you know, don't pick chrome or don't pick um, gold and brass tapware because you see it everywhere. If you love it, go for it. I'm all for that, but don't just pick it because everyone else is either. Alrighty, I'm just going to see how everyone's comments are going and then I've answered everyone so far. Cool. All righty. Next. I think that's actually what I've wanted to talk about in terms of kitchen trends. I don't want to overwhelm you too much because if you are designing a kitchen, don't just design it around a a, you know, a particular trend that's huge because Melissa and Adon said it's huge, you know, I've got to do it. I'm just giving you some ideas to think outside the box a little bit. And, you, you know, if you start to see some of these trends appear, it, it means you're taking notice, which is great. And if you start to see it more and more and you start pinning more of these images on Pinterest, something to consider that you are um, really uh, drawn to, to that particular um, element in the kitchen. So, like I said, kitchens and bathrooms is something I love working with. Um, it's something I'm really passionate in because I'm all about the detail. And I want to share with you an exciting uh, new service package that I'm offering at the moment, which is eDesign. Um, it's huge in the States. Um, it's fairly new to the Australian market because we're all a little bit scared about online. Um, but what it is, it, I've launched it because I am not seeing clients at the moment. Um, it's all online. It's all via Zoom. So eDesign is a great affordable and online option to work with me. And it doesn't matter where you live and it doesn't matter what your budget is as well. It's a great way um, if you're wanting a little bit of help with your kitchen or bathroom renovation, or maybe you're wanting to redecorate your lounge room or your bedroom. You're wanting some new furniture and artwork to just spruce it up a little bit. So it's, it's a definitely a, a great way to work with me because it's a true collaboration between myself and you because it's all done at your own pace um, and I'm just there for the help and the guidance along the way. 
So it's, um, it's a four-step process and it starts off with you filling out the design questionnaire so I can really understand what it is you're after and how you want me involved. You then send through your um, photos of the space you want help with as well as measurements. And if you're a bit unsure about how that works, don't worry because I'm going to send you a welcome pack. And that includes um, all the information, what, what I need you to send through. We, you then get a 60-minute um, online uh, design consult where we chat a little bit more and find out exactly um, what your overall vision is. And that will allow me to better interpret that and provide you with a really beautiful room. So after two weeks, I come back to you with a, an exciting personalised design kit. So that includes a mood board. So a mood board is a collection of images of all the furniture items, the lighting, the artwork, all the homewares that I suggest. It includes a floor plan as well. So I'll show you where I think everything can work and, and, and fit within the space, but also fit through your front door as well, because that's important. And you'll also receive a shopping list. So it will include every single item that I've suggested, as well as you know where to get it from and the price too. During this time, you have full um, email and phone support as well. You know, we can um, change out a few things here and there if you're not quite sure on some of those items. And then you get access to trade pricing as well. So as interior designers, we get access to trade suppliers that the um, general public don't or can't access. So not only will you get a beautiful one-of-a-kind bespoke look, I share my discounts with my clients. So it means you get savings up to 30% off. And any trade suppliers I suggest to you, I will do all that ordering for you. So you don't have to worry about any of the organising deliveries um, or days. You just deal with myself and I will place all those orders on your behalf. Then once that exciting time comes where all the furniture is delivered it's all up to you and you don't have to feel afraid because you've got all those tools that I've provided you to help you put together that room yourself. And then after all that's been installed and you've had fun moving it around and, and following my direction, you then um, get a 30-minute post-delivery video call as well to answer any questions. You can show me around the space and, um, and help you with any styling questions as well. So um, it's really affordable, like I said. Um, I've broken it up into four different spaces. Entries and hallways at $450. We've got bedrooms such as your master bedroom, your guest bedroom uh, or nurseries. They're $650. Um, and then we go into living room, dining room or open plan areas at $950. And then if you need help with kitchen or bathroom, uh, renovations. So you need a hand with kitchen uh, selecting your tiles, your bench tops, your tapware, all of that. That's about a thousand dollars. So I'm going to post a link below if you wanted to access that or ask me any questions at all. I'm here for that. But I'm finding online is great because it's really um, showing people that hiring an interior designer is not expensive. I am here for everybody, no matter what budget. I've worked with some great clients where we've picked stuff from Ikea. And, you know, some of their stuff is perfect because it suits certain areas of the home and especially your budget or the stage in your life that you're in as well. I work with lots of first homeowners too that can't afford beautiful high-end solid pieces. So it's all about mixing. Um, high-end and, and low everyday affordable options too. So don't be afraid of that. So I'm going to post um, the link to that. If you have any questions, if you're watching this replay back and you have some questions about um, some of the trends, you know, post them below. I, I would love to hear them. I'm here to help you out. And, um, you know, designing or, you know, um, redesigning a space is meant to be fun and it shouldn't be overwhelming. Um, use this group to your advantage. If you need my help, ask away. You know, you, I'm not charging you for these questions. That's why I created this, this group, to really understand what it is you need help with and, um, and, and to be there for, for some support. So um, I hope you all uh, enjoyed it um, and you have a great weekend. 
stay safe. And um, next week we're actually doing another live workshop. Um, it's going to be a Q&A with an electrician I love to use. Uh, we're going to be talking about how lighting can be incorporated into your interiors um, because I find lighting can be the last thing people um, think about. They spend all their money on beautiful um, kitchens and bathrooms and just pop down lights everywhere because that's what you do. So, um, But there's more to it than down lights. Um, a final question here. What are your thoughts regarding PowerPoint's location on a beautiful bench? Yes. I'm going to touch a little bit on it now, but I think that's a great question for next week when we chat to, to Canny Electrics. Um, you can get some beautiful PowerPoints these days that are flush. Um, so if you want to hide them and put them on the side of an island bench um, or even pop them in a drawer too on the island bench too. So if you've got lots of iPads and, and iPhones you want to charge, Popping them in the drawer is great, but there's some smart pop-up PowerPoint solutions too. And the, the trim of that um, PowerPoint can actually match the, the benchtop surface too. So it can look really seamless. So um, I hope that helps. Thank you so much for joining. I've had lots of fun and I'm so glad you're asking questions. It, um, it, it really does make me smile when, um, when people are, are asking um, you know, want to know more because uh, I think it's fun that people are really loving a home that is beautiful and personal. So anyway, have a great weekend and uh, and I will see you next week. See ya.